On the subject of whether he pulled the trigger, we've alluded to it a couple times. He he told George Stephanopoulos in that overacted bit. Oh no no no! You know, never no, 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 no. never did. No 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 no. Sorry, I, I don't mean to make fun of it. It's a, yeah. it's a bad situation, but that was protesting. Oh no, come much. on. It's fine. Yes, we're allowed to make a little fun of his overacting. Um, so yeah, he, he denies he pulled the trigger. Uh, we played the soundbite yesterday, and now we have another one. Here are two excerpts. I'm going to play both of them for you guys. Um, of Brian, uh, of, of Alec Baldwin's interview with the sheriff's office in December after this happened, in which he doesn't say, I pulled the trigger, but he says, I shot the gun, which is pretty good <laughs> if you're the prosecutor. It may not be exactly what you want, but it's pretty good. I'll play them both for you. Uh, here's the first one, soundbite six. I am speechless. We're here shooting. Everything was going fine. Joel is my friend. I'm one of the producers on this movie. Mm -hmm. We've developed this movie together for three years. I left my wife and six kids in New York to come here for a month to shoot this movie. And I'm the one that shot the gun today that had a live bullet go through that woman's body and into his body. And I need to know, how did that happen? Where did that bullet come from? Where did a lot of those, there are no live rounds in her kid, I'm told. I'm the one that shot the gun. Here's the second one. When I shot the gun away from the cameraman, I always never aimed against the camera. I turned and I went like this to stay in the camera, and she was there, and the gun went off, and she just went right on the ground. All right, so that's twice. I shot the gun. I'm the one that shot the gun. Now, of course, he'll wiggle later and say, I meant I meant I was the one holding it when it went off. You know, I, the, the, the bullet came from the gun I was holding. But that's not helpful to his defense. No, and you know what? Th those are statements, at least one of them, which is more contemporaneous, like more in temporal proximity to the incident. So some will say it carries less weight. Others will say it carries more weight because you have less time to prepare the lie like you might have done on George Stephanopoulos' interview, which is nonetheless very damning as far as I'm concerned as well, because he says, I never I never pulled the trigger, but I pulled the hammer back like this, like this, and I pulled the hammer all the way back. And I don't know of the functioning of, of, of firearms if, if when you're pulling the hammer back, if you then compress the trigger, but which would allow the hammer to strike back on the bullet. But, you know, those, er, those early on statements somewhat contradicted by later on statements once he's had time to reflect and, 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 and redraft internally, they can carry more weight. Uh, he, he knew the gun went off at the time, so it might just be a figure of speech. But yeah, those, mm -hmm. those, those statements shortly after the incident itself, are, they're, they're, they, they tend to be reliable. They're going to come into evidence and he's going to regret them. It's one of the many mistakes he made. Honestly, I realize he was trying to say, I did nothing wrong, so I'm going to open book and I'm going to speak with the sheriff. He shouldn't have done that. Any criminal defense attorney will tell you, don't, don't be helpful. That you might get charged. Keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to George. Don't talk to Chris Cuomo. Don't talk to the sheriff. Be quiet for once. It was um, it was one of the analyses I put out. He, he just could not shut up. And and it, I think it's more telling of, of the narcissism of the individual thinking they're going to talk their way out. They are going to convince people uh, of what they're trying to convince them. And because they're they're so narcissistic uh, spiritually. They think it's going to happen, and they get more frustrated when it doesn't happen that they have to keep doubling down and doubling down. He couldn't stop yeah. talking. Every time he said something, it would sort of contradict a previous statement. It also made him look like an absolute insensitive bastard. I'm sorry to swear on your show. Insensitive, callous. <laughs> He's the victim in all of this. Never says Helena's name. Um, and in every in every public statement that he gives, uh, there's, there's too much protesting, and there's also... Uh, now, I just forgot exactly what I was going to say. There's too much protesting, but he's making himself the victim uh, over the actual victim. Yes. Uh, that's, like so that's what, led, that's what led Helena Hutchins's husband to come out, and he was very angry after that uh, interview with George Stephanopoulos and was saying, "What? who's the victim here? It's not Alec Baldwin. And there was a clear divide between them, as one might expect after having seen Alec with George. And the, the, so the husband was clearly ang angry with Alec. But then they settled the civil suit that the husband, Matt Hutchins, filed and agreed to resume shooting, resume shooting the movie out. They said they couldn't do it in New Mexico, but they were going to do it in L.A. And so it seemed to be a kumbaya because it was going to be with Alec Baldwin. And the guy, the husband, the widower, was going to be an executive producer on the production. All of this is mind-blowing. 
Like, okay, I guess they made up. I don't understand. But here's the update. Here's the update. New York Times reporting on January 20th. Um, at one point, there were plans to begin filming this month. A person with knowledge of the project who was granted anonymity to discuss to describe the production plans said that as of Thursday, yesterday, the movie was still on track to be completed with Mr. Baldwin in the lead role and Joel Souza, who was wounded in the shooting, returning as director. Okay. Uh, and they Joel's- go on from there. Oh, sorry, but listen, but listen to this. Um, when the settlement was reached, Mr. Hutchins said in a statement he had, quote, no interest in engaging in recriminations or attribution of blame, and that, quote, all of us believe Helena's death was a terrible accident. Well, that's not what he's saying now. That was, this settlement was just like a couple months ago. Now, in response to the criminal charges, his lawyer says on his behalf, our independent investigation also supports that charges are warranted. It's a comfort to the family that in New Mexico, no one is above the law. We support the charges and will fully cooperate. It goes on from, I can't be What's happening? Well, I mean, th- th- there can be some wiggle room that now that they've seen the report of the FBI, I don't know if the FBI report was out at the time of the settlement, but th- the bottom line, there cannot not be a prosecution of this just because there was a civil settlement that left the surviving family members um, sat- well, satisfied in as much as they can be satisfied. It- it's not that it doesn't require the the, the widow or the-, the children to file a complaint. The-, the state has the obligation to file the charges on behalf of the people and on behalf of the victim. Helena Hutchins, it's, um, you couldn't escape it. The settlement, you know, we were pontificating at the time whether or not the civil settlement was sort of a a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the prosecutors to drop the case because we're all happy, but you can't do that. There is someone dead. Uh, Whether or not it was an accident, that's what the basis of involuntary manslaughter is or negligence. Yeah, that that acknowledges Uh, accident. So uh, it's going to be a very awkward movie set. I'll just say that, very awkward. (laughs) And they may really need to find... It's not happening. New it's not going to happen. It, it can't happen. No. Something's going to happen. It I'm not sure happen. that I not to not to say New York Times has not been unreliable. I, I the, an anonymous source <laughs> will see. I predict it's not going to go down at this point. I don't know how it can possibly go down. But well, I, no. I remember not, my not thought from earlier. This. I, I remembered my thought from earlier before. It's that whenever oh, Alec Baldwin went out and made more public statements, what he was describing made him sound like someone who is angry at the circumstances, you know, would, even in that police interview. I'm away from my family and my six kids for a month on a low-budget movie set. It sounds like he's angry, and it sounds like he's tired. It sounds like he didn't want to be there, like he thought he was doing other people favors, um, which might explain something of a uh, an outburst from someone who might lack impulse control in general. So I'm sticking mm-hmm. to my original theory, but I doubt we'll ever get a massive admission. I'll give you the exact quote from the prosecutors to the LA Times explaining... Um, what they think his duty was that he failed to uphold. Um, The question from the LA Times was, Baldwin has maintained that he relied on other professionals to do their jobs and check the gun. Why did you charge him? Answer, he absolutely had a duty to either check the weapon himself or have someone to check it in front of him. We have spoken with several actors, A-list and less than A-list, and all have confirmed that when you are handed a gun, you need to look at it and make sure that it's safe. So that's what they're going with. Um, Then listen to this, Viva. This is interesting to me. The question from the the Times. There's still the outstanding question of how did the live bullets get on set? Yes, there is that question. Does not knowing the answer weaken your case? And by the way, here they acknowledge they still don't know the answer. They, They answer, quote, everybody seems to want to know where the live rounds came from, and we've definitely interviewed everybody trying to answer that question. But when it came down to whether it really matters, I mean... There were six live rounds found in various places on this movie set, which is obviously very uh, concerning. But the armorer should have caught those live rounds on set. And so our biggest concern is why didn't Hannah Gutierrez Reed catch those live rounds on set? Not so much on how they got there. That may be a question that never gets answered. Well, that, I mean, that's it. So we talked at length that last time you were on about the guy who supplied the bullets. Uh, yeah, the ammo, Seth Kinney. Seth Kinney. This guy's off the hook. It, it, it sounds. It certainly sounds like he is. But this would be an example where the the prosecutors they're just saying more than they have to. Bottom line, whether or not Alec had to check each and every bullet, make sure they check it in front of him when he does it. He should never have pointed a gun, a real gun, whether or not it's called a prop gun, in the direction of a human and pulled the trigger. Like many people, I am eating healthier, and that's why I love good olive oil. It makes such a big difference in your meals. And by good, I mean fresh. 
All right, olive oil packs the most flavor and the healthiest nutrients when it's fresh from the farm. And that is the problem with supermarket olive oils. They're not fresh. Ever think about it? How many months that thing's been sitting there growing stale? This is why I like my olive oil direct from small, award-winning farms, and you can have it thanks to a guy named TJ Robinson, also known as the olive oil hunter. When I first tasted TJ's farm fresh oils, I wasn't expecting. I'm like, I don't know. Is it really going to? It does make a difference. It does. They've got these beautiful, vibrant, grassy flavors. They're delicious on salad, veggies, pasta, meat, fish, whatever you put olive oil on. As an introduction to his fresh pressed olive oil club, TJ's willing to send you a full size $39 bottle of one of the world's finest artisanal olive oils for just one itty bitty dollar to help him cover shipping. Best of all, there's never a commitment to buy anything, and you can cancel your membership at any time. Get your free $39 bottle for just $1 shipping and taste the difference freshness makes. Go to harvestfreshnow.com. That's harvestfreshnow.com for a free bottle and pay just $1 in shipping. Harvestfreshnow.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.